So if I was to ask you, what is Christmas all about? I'm almost sure that you're gonna get the answer incorrect. Maybe you tell me something obvious, like it's the birth of Jesus Christ, savior to all mankind. Maybe you take the approach that giving is better than receiving, and it's about Coca-Cola mythical character we all know as Santa. Maybe you would take the pagan approach and tell me it's the death and rebirth of the sun during the winter solstice. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but these things are incorrect. I didn't ask you why we celebrate Christmas or what we do at Christmas. Only that what is Christmas all about? And I'm gonna share with you my Christmas story. That as a child, I absolutely loved Christmas. Then growing up, I fell out of love. But then because of the Bulgarian traditions and my new country, how I was able to fall back in love with Christmas. This is what I'm gonna show you today. I'd still like to know what you think. So write your answers in the comments and at the end of the video, we're gonna see if you were correct. So when I was just a little boy growing up in the UK, like every child, I loved Christmas, even though it was heavily influenced by America and the Coca-Cola Santa of today. Advertisements everywhere and thinking only about the toys. Though I'm not a big fan of the cold weather, I absolutely, like most children, love playing in the snow. During that time, I remember that the snow sometimes came to your knees and we would make snowmen, make igloos and have snowball fights. I also loved decorating the tree whilst at the same time listening and dancing and singing to old classic Christmas songs. I grew up as a Christian, so on Christmas Eve, we would go to church and we would do a Christingle, carrying our orange with the candle and was an amazing spectacle while singing to carol songs. The same night, I remember the times not being able to sleep, waiting for Santa to come, seeing if I could hear Santa and Rudolph coming in downstairs. Finally, after being able to get to sleep, I would wake up in the morning very early, rushing down to open up all my presents. Though the time came and I started to grow up, my belief in God disappeared and I started to take a more scientific approach to life. Also, I found out that Santa didn't exist and it was all a lie. Quickly. My big presents turned into cards filled with money. The only excitement that I would have would be to find out whether I get more money than the previous year. Then Uncle Sam's capitalistic washing machine had taken hold of me and my brain was only spinning around trying to get the money. This meant that my heart started to drift away from the Christmas spirit and I didn't care anymore about Christmas. At the age of 13, I took a job as a dishwasher in pursuit of my career as a chef. Though I still really loved Christmas, but it wasn't because of the reasons we talked about before. This was because there were so many holidays during this month that if I worked, I would get double time, which meant double money. This was the year that Christmas died. Some 20 years later, I would work every single day Christmas day and it wouldn't bother me. I didn't care. I was earning money. That was until 2015 when my daughter Jana was born. That Christmas I spent my first Christmas in Bulgaria and the Christmas spirit came back alive. Though Bulgaria is quite a religious country, most of its traditions are very governed by pagan superstitious beliefs. The word Christmas is coming from Christ Mass, which is meaning essentially the Feast of Christ. Though Bulgarian is such a religious country, they don't use a religious word. Their word, Kolida, has nothing to do with religion. This has a complete different meaning, and I'm gonna share with you that meaning later on in the video. Actually, if you know already what that meaning is, please put it in the comments below. We're gonna see if you're correct at the end of the video. My first experience of Bulgaria was on Christmas Eve, otherwise known as Budni Vecha. On this evening, you had a feast with an odd number of dishes, minimum seven. And you also had to have an odd number of guests sat around the table. Dishes like bean stew, cabbage or roast peppers stuffed with rice, nuts, dried fruit would all be served. And the most important was a round bread known as pitka. Inside the bread was a coin and the oldest person at the table would break the bread, give a piece to everybody, and the person who found the coin inside would be lucky enough to have money for the whole of the next year. Then for the next few years, my job took me back to the cruise ships. So I was saddened about the fact that I wasn't able to spend Christmas with my family. That was until one year, 
2019-2020 Christmas that I was able to get Christmas off. I took Jana to England for her to experience a real British Christmas and to meet the rest of the family. Jana absolutely loves the Christmas lights and my mum went all out to decorate the whole house. Just like a regular British person and after we'd put the whiskey out for Santa, which was actually for me, and the carrot for Rudolph, Jana went to sleep waiting for Santa for the presents of the next day. As she came down the stairs, all my feelings of childhood came back. Seeing her, I started to really love Christmas again. Though, on this day, I didn't get the day off. As a chef, I was expected to cook the Christmas dinner. But the thing was, this time, I was together with family, cooking for them. This was a complete different experience. And what are the things that you love to do at Christmas time? Write it down in the comments, I'd love to know. Following week, my mum threw a massive party for New Year's Eve. She invited the whole family around with music, karaoke, in the tent in the back of her garden. This was an amazing time when all the family was together. And I do like a bit of karaoke, which you might see in future episodes. After this experience, I started to understand what Christmas was all about. The following year, we spent the Christmas in Bulgaria. Though it's amazing to see, it takes me back to my childhood. And because of the amazing nature here in Bulgaria, though we're having quite mild winters, recently. If you really want to have your white Christmas, you can always go to the mountains and have that Christmas day full with snow. And I love that Bulgaria has taken some of this UK, USA traditions on. Things like decorating the whole cities, there is Christmas markets, and there is also the Santa. Kids are writing letters to Santa. Even they take it to the next level, some of them invite Santa to come to the village and deliver presents to all the kids. We spent another Budni Vecha at Petia's parents, again with the family, with the odd number of dishes and the odd number of people around the table. And one of the most beautiful traditions is after the vegan feast on Budni Vecha. After midnight, all the males from the family would get together. They would go around and sing as a choir. This is known as Kola Duvene. The boys were known as Kola Dari. They would go to all the houses of the village or the town and they would sing. This was essentially to ward away all bad spirits for the following year. They would be rewarded with food. Today, you can find mixed gender, both male and female, but they would sing the song twice. Traditionally, because the male would sing it alone and then the whole group would sing together the same song after. Some families leave the meal from the night previous to be left on the table overnight. This was just in case any spirits of previous ancestors came to visit and they wanted something to eat. This is kind of another pagany style ritual. But Petia's mum is very clean person. She would never let this happen. So you wake up the next day and yes, Santa is also here in Bulgaria. He's known as the Adokolida or in the communist times, the Adomaras, and he's bringing presents as well. And I'm so happy to still have this tradition. The smile of a child's face when they receive the presents is absolutely priceless. And on this day, you should also welcome the people with Vesela Kolida. So why is Christmas called Kolida in Bulgarian? Many believe that the word comes from a Latin word, Kalent, which is the first of, but it's more likely that this word came from Kolia. Kolia in Bulgarian is slaughter or butcher. And this is one of the most important traditions of this month from back in the day. They would slaughter the pig that they would have growing all year round. And then after the, the fasting for 40 days of Advent, they would roast the whole pig, invite the whole family around and feast on the pig. It makes more sense that the word Kolida comes from Kolia. This is what the tradition of Kolida is about. But not only that, we go back to the fact that everybody from the whole family is invited around. And this is the main thing in the Bulgarian culture, that during Christmas time, you spend the whole time with the family. And this exactly is what Christmas is all about. Though the celebrations and the traditions don't end there. Of course, one week later is New Year's Eve. Everybody loves New Year's Eve and you should not take anything away from that. This is a time to spend with the friends. 
And of course, it wouldn't be Bulgaria if there weren't some pagan rituals to do with that also. So what happens on New Year's Eve? After drinking and celebrating and enjoying the fireworks, you also have the ritual of Servaka. From the Cornell tree, otherwise known as the Durian in Bulgarian, the children take a branch and they tie it in a special way, decorate it with popcorn, fruits, nuts, seeds, and they are known as Silvaknitsa. The children, at the same time as reciting a famous poem, hit the adults on the back, and in return, the adults have to give money to the children. This is a great time for the children, though I'm slipping a little bit back to this capitalistic style. The fun doesn't end there. Also, for everybody else, there is a barnitzer, special barnitzer. Barnitzer is kind of like phyllo pastry layered up with eggs, cheese, and yogurt. And in every slice of barnitzer, piece of paper which tells you your look, whether it be a new car, new house, holiday. And also there is a coin inside. And everybody gets a chance to take a piece of barnitzer and find out what is their look for the next year. And everybody wants to get that coin because then next year you have no money problems. So I think you understand now that the idea of this holiday is about friends and family and being together. And now I think we should definitely take a moment for those people that don't have family, but we should definitely take a minute to think about those people. And we should definitely take a minute to think about ourselves. That it's not about presents, money, buying, deals, Black Friday, which doesn't exist anyway, but it's about spending time with the loved ones. And Bulgarians have got that down to a T. So now you know what Christmas is all about. I hope like me, that you're going to look forward to coming Christmases. I really hope you liked this video. And if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. This really helps us out. And thanks for everybody who's always giving that thumbs up as well. And if you want to see my opinion of an old style Bulgaria, I reckon that you check out this video here. If you're thinking about learning Bulgarian, or actually you can do it with any other language, I've got a great video that you can check out here. And I'm gonna see you over on one of them.